So today I want to discuss making handmade stencils for abstract art on your jelly plate. So today we're going to be doing ones that are a little bit more complicated. So we're going to have some more interior cuts. So I have today with me my self healing cutting mat, um, a scissors, exacto knives, and um, we're going to do a little bit more drawing today. And it's still a pretty simple process, but I'm going to link in the description below to the materials you'll need to make some of these, and then we'll get printing. So meet me in the next clip. So in my last video, we worked with using just some basic shapes and the negative space left over from these basic shapes to create um, mono prints um, in multiple different uh, different colors and multiple pulls and um, using stencils on the gel plate from hand cut stencils. So today I wanted to up it a little bit and just show you how I um, create stencils with interior cuts. And these are really fun to use too. So a lot of times I'm going to use that same kind of paper that I mono print on. So if I have prints that I'm not 100% happy with, I'm going to maybe turn them over and use some of those. This is the 80 pound drawing paper that I used to print on or 100 pounds. Sometimes if I have 100 pound drawing paper, I'll also print on that. So I'm going to just do some basic ones to get started. And then this is a self healing cutting mat that I use when I um, cut out with X-Acto knives. So we're just going to get started. And one of the things I like to do is have um, a gel, a gel print printer. I have all different sizes, but when I, when I print, I, I tend to really like these little ones because that, I can kind of do a lot of experimentation on them. So I want a basic idea of how big my print is going to be um, a lot of times when I'm getting started. Um, and I like to hand draw everything, but I wanted to point out that um, there's, there's a lot of tools in the sewing department you might like, like this is for um, quilting, but this always gives you a square corner and you can see through it, which I really love. And I use that, this is a quilting tool, but I use it a lot when I'm trying to get a square corner um, if I'm making a pattern. If you don't like the way you draw things um, and you want perfect circles, there's lots of things that you can use I kind of like things to be quirky, but then there's like things like this that are very inexpensive that you can buy. And these are available online, but like in the stationary department, they'll have stuff like this. This is like a, it's like a circle cutter, decimal circle. I mean, we used to use this in jewelry making when we cut out earrings and things like that. That's why I have them. So I use these in metal work, but you know, you can, you can find these in um, the stationery store, um, but they have all different shapes. So I have all different ones because we used to, we used to cut earring blanks with these out of sheet metal, out of silver and copper. But then they have these other kind of really wonderful shapes that you can buy and use. Now I, I like to do everything by hand and cut everything by hand because I kind of go for a quirky look when I'm cutting and I really like the organic feel of doing um, everything by hand. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to cut, um, I'm going to cut, draw first and then cut out some shapes. Now, if it's not perfectly even, I don't stress out about it because I like that in a stencil. Okay. I am going to, I kind of want something with a repeating diamond pattern. So I'm going to make some diamonds.
like that. Um, and now I'm going to do what I think is going to be a thinner version of what I just made. Now, these self-healing cutters come in every size imaginable. I have smaller ones, I have bigger ones. So normally what I would do with these is that I like to I like to cut out the outer edges with the scissors just because it goes easier. It just goes faster. And I know there's a lot of people that want everything to be perfect. I sign, I kind of self-correct my drawings a lot of times with a scissor. And I think to myself, well, if Matisse could do it, <laughs> if he could correct drawings and cut shapes out in the air, then I can do it too. Um, that's kind of what he did. Um, then I'm going to do the same. And so what I do is I like to come in and cut my shapes out, lay it on the self-healing mat, and then I'm going to cut these shapes out. And there, I ripped it. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to just tape it with masking tape. Sometimes you really have to push to get it to go all the way through. And I guess I did not do that there. I'm going to get a different one. That one might not have been sharp enough. I had the little baby one there. So we're just going to go here. Get the big one, the big bad but bad boy out. That's gonna work better. Please be careful. I'm like a maniac with everything. I'm always in a rush. These mats are indispensable for cutting on because it really gives you something to push against. If you don't have one, you could always use like a piece of corrugated cardboard um, so you don't have to run out and buy one. But they are very nice to have and you don't need a gigantic one. I probably have the largest one and the smallest one ever made. I have every size but I've been making art my whole life. <laughs> so I have all the tools and I do use them all so I don't feel bad. I have no guilt. Okay. So those go very quickly as you can see. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna waste this even though I tore it. I'm gonna fix it. And the thing I wanted to mention about using this kind of paper with acrylic paint is the more layers of paint that you put onto this paper the stronger they become because it's a it's a layer of polymer that you're putting onto the paper so it gets stronger with each use um, the more paint you put on the stronger it becomes and so I have some of these some of these actually I have that are years old and um, they don't just fall apart when you use them. They actually can become stronger, especially if you let them dry in between uses. 
Now this one already had a painting on the back, so it's already strong on the back. And the more paint it gets on it, the stronger it will become. So keep that in mind as you're using them. This one, I think I'm just gonna throw a little tape on, it'll be fine. Nothing's gonna, no catastrophe will happen. And that's it. Yeah, I tend not to freak out when things, when little accidents happen. It just, I'm not gonna let it ruin my day. Okay, there we are, all right. Okay, now that is gonna be interesting. All right, that's a good one. Let's try that Hi. one out. So briefly, I wanna just talk to you about color and how I, how I teach my students how to find harmonious color palettes. So my favorite color wheel is this one by the Color Wheel Company. And this is the one I, I have all my students buy and I briefly go over different components of this wheel and how it works when I'm teaching painting or any other process that requires us to um, use color and find color palettes that are going to work in our painting or our artwork. So one of my favorite color palettes is called the Analogous Color Palette, and that is from two to five colors in a row on the color wheel. So today what I thought I would do was show you that um, or talk about the Analogous Color Palette with you. Now this this color wheel actually breaks down all those things and it tells you about harmonious color schemes and it goes over that one, the analogous color palette, which are which is using colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel, at least two, but no more than five consecutive colors. And so um, that's one of my favorites. It always works no matter what five you choose in a row. And um, my second favorite is the analogous complementary color palette. So complementary colors are the ones that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So any five in a row, and then you kind of go in the middle, and then you and then you pick out one that's opposite whatever the middle of your colors that you've chosen, and that's the complementary color. And that gives you a pop of um, dynamic color to add to your color scheme. So I have this other tool, which is called the Interior Design Color Wheel by the Color Wheel Company. And um, I'm gonna link in my description below to both of these tools. This one is a wonderful tool because it gives you a window that shows your analogous um, colors and you can just keep turning it so you can choose which ones you want to work with. And you just keep turning it and it automatically gives you below your complementary colors, okay? So today I'm gonna go with um, a pale yellow in this next clip. I'm going with a pale yellow, a pale green, and a pale, um, and, a, and a violet, which is the complementary pop. So yellow and violet or purple are complementary colors, and I'm going with a pale yellow and a pale green. So we're going to have three colors. We're going to have two analogous colors and one complementary color um, in the next clip. Okay, these are so so much fun and so easy to use.
These are just straight strips. I'm gonna go in with another color. Okay, now these, this little shape was the negative space from this stencil that I had made. Let me just kind of lay these out. And you can really arrange these any way you want once they're cut. Okay. I really like to watch closely to what my negative space is doing when I'm laying these down and try to make it interesting. Okay. Okay. So you want to get this in here, roll it out. Interesting.
These are just straight strips. I'm going to go in with another color. Okay, now these, this little shape was the negative space from this stencil that I had made. Let me just kind of lay these out. You can really arrange these any way you want once they're cut. Okay. I really like to watch closely to what my negative space is doing when I'm laying these down. I try to make it interesting. Okay. Okay. So you want to get this in here, roll it out. Interesting. Sometimes I don't clean up the leftover and I a little bit of it shows through, which I don't mind. I'm still gonna use I'm gonna use two yellows this time. 
and then go in for purple. So now I'm doing the reverse. I'm just going to add the strips on top instead of rolling over them. I'm going to put strips over and then transfer over the strips. It will come out a little differently. This is all an experiment. I always orient my paper to the paper below so that my so my print line's up. No matter how many times I put it down, I'm orienting to the four corners below. Okay. Okay. I just picked up the rest of the wet paint. I'm going to do that same thing with this. This time, I'm going to roll out with the purple. I'm going to lay those stencils on top this time. Just see how that comes out. Going for the four corners. Sometimes I use my Baron. I'll use my fingers again. Interesting. I like this print better than the first one. Part of my paper got left behind. That's okay. All right. You can see how by intensifying the yellow to a deeper tone, how dynamic it looks against the violet now. Here I've used very um, pale tints of yellow and green. So a tint is anything, anytime you use a color mixed with white, it's a tint. So we use the tint of yellow, a tint of green, and then the full strength violet or purple. So it's not as dynamic. But here I've used the full strength uh, cadmium yellow, full strength yellow ochre, and then on top, we've put the full strength violet. So it's very, very dynamic, complementary color tone. So I drew this more complex kind of a stencil here. And it's kind of a spring theme because it's March 1st and I'm really done with the winter, even though it's still winter. And it's two 
vines with leaves going up the sides and in the center a row of tulip shaped flowers and so I'm almost done cutting it out. It's just like watching paint dry to have somebody sitting here drawing this and cutting the whole thing out because it was, it just took a little time to cut it out. And um, it's the same process. It just takes a little while to cut this out. And um, so I'm doing that now. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to roll this. I'm going to do a three colors. I'm going to do a background color. I think I'm going to do blue and then an analogous green. And then the complementary to color, uh, to green is uh, red, but I'm going to do a shade, a uh, tint of red, which is pink for the flowers. And I think that'll be very pretty. Um, so it's going to be analogous, two colors, analogous, blue and green, which are next to each other on the color wheel. And a pop of the complementary, but I'm going to do a shade of tint, which is pink. Pink is red and white mixed together. Okay, I will meet you back here when I'm done cutting this out. A really quick word about the cutting mats. Um, they're double-sided most of the time. And they're lovely to work with. This one is an eight by 11. And for most um, projects, you probably won't need one that's much bigger than this. This, this one I have here is 18 by um, 12. And this is a really nice size as well. Um, this one is also a double-sided one. So you can, you know, whatever pr sizes that you're working on, you gotta, gotta make, you know, a decision about which size would be more useful. I do have all the sizes. <laughs> I'm kind of a nut, but I do big pieces of art. So for me, um, having the different sizes really makes a difference for me. But I mean, today I only use this little one. I put this one underneath of, of it, but I mean, a lot of times I use just a small one. And this one you can see is really beat up. This one is not so beat up. Okay, just a quick uh, note about that. And these are by Fiskars, fiskars.com. You can find them on the internet. You can find them on Amazon. Um, you can find them just about anywhere. Um, a lot of sewists use these. So you can find them in the craft store, the sewing store. Um, but regular artists and collage artists and mixed media artists use these as well. Um, but they're really great to have if you're cutting and it makes it safer um, than just cutting on the table or cutting on a piece of cardboard. It's just a lot um, better because things don't skid around and it's it just makes using an X-Acto knife a lot easier and a lot safer process. So what I did, the one I cut just now, is more of an all-over pattern. And though, and though we can tell what it was based on, you know, flowers and vines, it's still a little bit abstracted and, you know, it's more of a pattern um, than it is anything else. And it's gonna be fun, I think. Okay, so now my first pull is generally just a background color. Now, anything that you see on here is coming out on your paper. So whenever, <laughs> I'm always trying to get this nice and smooth. So here we go. Now, my bottom paper always orients the top paper. Sometimes I offset my print. So once in a while, you'll see the print a little bit offset and I do it on purpose it's just something I do I don't mind all right that one was whoo that really stuck okay so when that happens I want to make sure that my 
my jellies set right. This pulled up a lot of the leftover stuff. Sometimes even after I clean, there's leftover stuff, but I don't mind it because I think it gives a more interesting print. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my stencil and I'm going to try to be very careful, okay? Because I don't... Here, I'm going to pull this over here. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is put down my color. I'm going to try to roll this and then Then lift it up. We'll see how this goes. I might have to roll some on the, on the paper to get a good amount of paint on here. Be very careful with it because I don't want it to rip. And it's got a lot of fancy cuts on it. All right. Okay. I think I did it the right way. Okay, now. Okay. It's very subtle because we use analogous colors and the analogous colors are very close to each other, but it's kind of um, working with the background and I kind of really like it. So now I'm going to, I need another piece of paper to roll on. So I don't want to mix my, when you mix your comp complementary colors, you can make a mess if they're still wet. So I'm going to really make sure my brayer is clean. Um, and I'm going to want to make sure that I don't have any more green on my plate that's wet before I go any further. So I'm going to really dry that up. I'm going to put down my... Make sure that those are going to go right in the middle. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to put some pink flowers. Oh, wait. That one's not cooperating. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to very carefully roll just my flowers and try not to get that in anywhere else. really happy. 
fairly happy little little tulips and some green. Very fun. I really like it. And there's ever so much purple happening in there. So things I like to do sometimes when I'm done with these um, or after I've pulled them, if I want to um, do some accenting is that I will sometimes if I want to pull out certain things or accent certain parts or bits, I can grab um, like a Neocolor crayon and put some accents on. Neocolor is a wonderful adult crayon. They have... Um, They have water-soluble versions and also um, really nice versions that are non-water-soluble, which is what I have here. These are just so much fun to use. And um, so these won't move at all. And I do add these sometimes to my to my mono prints or my watercolor drawings and paintings and sketches. So if I want to just do a little bit of an accent on this, I think that this is a nice little way to pull out some of the elements here. I love that. Yeah. I like how the, the pink was a little on the coral side, so I'm just kind of accenting that with a coral crayon. I just really love that one. I think it came out great.